Hey, this is Mark Still with the Practical Still. This is Dan Cavallari. Pretty sure that's right, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, if you don't know this, we do a Friday Sips Live every week where we sit and drink whiskey and talk about whiskey and have a ball. It's fun. With a few people who uh, chime in with comments. It's yeah, great. You could do that too, because I know, for one thing's for sure, nobody's actually working <laughs> on Friday afternoon. You're faking it. So if you're going to fake it, put a little window up. Fake that and watch us drink whiskey. That's right. Today, when we were doing that, and we only have the one camera. Oh, only one camera today. Okay. Today, when we were doing that, we actually opened up this Dragon's Milk Origin bourbon, and we really liked it. And so we thought, while we're here, we're still set up, everything's still sitting here, mm -hmm. let's do an open the bottle video on that whiskey. Yeah. It was really good. And it, it starts off because New Holland makes a really cool beer that we both like. I don't know. You seem to be surprised at how good it was. I'd, Have you had that? I'd never had it before. Delicious. My, my go Delicious is beer. Left hand milk stuff. And so. uh, full disclosure, they sent this bottle to Dan to do the review, um, and it was exciting because not too many people have sent us bottles, and it was really good. Yeah. Um, interesting, interesting bourbon. It is a bourbon. Um, we don't know the exact mash bill, but they do note a high percentage of malted barley. Yes. And they also say it's a uh, high rye. High rye, high malted barley. Yes, so, uh, and a blend of two different uh, whiskeys. And this is 100 proof, or sorry, no. I think the two whiskeys was the Wyoming thing. This is this was its own thing. Oh, okay. It's 95 proof, sorry. 95 proof, five years old. Lovely bottle if you're into bottles. Uh, we're going to take another sip because, frankly, that's kind of why we're doing this other video. Got so a we super, can sip. Super Game of Thrones vibe. But we were excited because you know, a lot of times there's a new whiskey. Uh, there's hard to love the height. There are a lot of non-traditional whiskey producers trying to crack a very hot market. Um, but the truth is, whiskey starts off a lot like beer production. And if you're really good at beer production and really good at fermentation, you have a chance to make a pretty good whiskey. And this one was surprising. There was a weird vegetable thing on the way in. But to me, the overwhelming, the overwhelming experience is that minty finish. So keep talking so I can keep sniffing this. So, what, what if I want to sniff? <laughs> All right, you can sniff. So to me, the, the nose I'm getting is a lot of vanilla. Yeah. But it is not the flavor profile no. at all. No. Um, and we both agreed there's definitely a vegetable taste to this. Mm -hmm. And we say that. That's not a bad thing. Mm. It's it's actually interesting because, like I said, with the, uh, in the Friday sips, is with whiskeys like this, anything that's young or mm. or using an MGP to do something unique and different with a lot of complex flavors is very difficult. And this does that. It's it's something totally unlike any flavor yeah. profile you get anywhere else. As we come back to it a few minutes later, and we did drink some other things after this, the nose is even more vanilla. Yeah, it's it it's. I don't know. It's it's viscous, but boy, that mint just hits quick. It is a vegetal. Mm. They, you know, in their tasting notes, they talk a lot about fruit. I don't get a ton of fruit, but boy, that mint is delicious. See, I just I just finally got the fruit. Like, and what I got was uh, walking into there's that really old timey candy store in Old Town, and it's not the flavors or that saccharine sweetness. It's the smells, mm. which is a subtle affair. And and I like, still don't get that. I, did, I finally did, and I think it's like jelly beans mixed with, uh, what are the cinnamon ones? Those little cinnamon uh, candies. I'm sorry, uh, candy is chocolate. <laughs> Anything not chocolate is not worth eating. Such a limited worldview. Uh, that is just delicious. I, I, like it it, I like it more than I did 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. We got, we got more mint earlier. I get a lot more mint now. Do you? I'm still getting that vegetable I, I think earthiness. The, I think the challenge is this is more... It's, there's more complexity to this than I think you notice right mm -hmm. off because the mint now sits kind of right here. Mm -hmm. And under that, I'm starting to get a little bit of dark, dark fruits. Mm -hmm. But still, it's overwhelmingly a vegetal. There's some spice yeah. to it now, some a little bit of pepper. Mm -hmm. oh. I got that on the back of the tongue earlier. I think that's good. It's complex. I think what, that's really what's neat about it. And shockingly, when you said we talked about in the live uh, stream, what's it worth? And I say to me, that's a $45 bottle. How much is the MSRP? $45. $45. Now, in a world where you can get a five-year, age-dated, 95-proof pr uh, whiskey produced by the actual distillery, not sourced, mm -hmm. and a, maybe not a history in whiskey, but certainly a history in the production of delicious beverages, yeah. I think that's a hell of a deal. This is a conversation starter for sure at an next whiskey night. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 45 bucks. 
I would say buy it. Yep, I absolutely buy it. I will buy this for 45 bucks with my monies. And uh, recently released, uh, mid-April, I think it came out. Correct. So if you see it, give it a shot. It's definitely something different. There's zero not to like about that. If you like things like, say, if you're a high rye bourbon or a Kentucky style rye drinker, you're gonna like that. Mm. If you're a Scotch drinker, because that high malt content, you're gonna like that. Yeah. Give it a try and let us know what you think. You got a big old nose like me, you're gonna love the, no the nose. <laughs> Noses. Cheers, Dan. Cheers.